Osteoarthritis is heart disease of our joints. This fact is difficult for a lot of people to appreciate because we think that joints are biologically and distinctly different from blood vessels, and they are not. They have the same embryological origins. If I was to say that diabetes promotes heart disease, most of you listening would say, oh, of course, of course, of course. So if that's true, then we should have evidence that shows that diabetes also promotes osteoarthritis. And, well, that's been known for a long time, too. This is uh, February of 2015, but uh, it's been known for a lot longer than that, several years, probably at least 10 years now. So you can, we can see osteoarthritis and diabetes connection. So this means we need to look at osteoarthritis from a different perspective, as if it is heart disease of our joints. And that would mean that there would be evidence suggesting that low-grade chronic inflammation in the absence of pain or injury is going to cause osteoarthritis the same way uh, we develop atherosclerosis without pain or injury until we have the big painful event potentially called a heart attack. So what do we know about uh, chronic inflammation and osteoarthritis? And we, this is from 2016, low-grade inflammation is a key mediator of the pathogenesis of osteoarthritis. That has been known for decades, actually. And yet, in particular, the problem largely for uh, orthopedic medical doctors, massage therapists, physical therapists, chiropractors, they view osteoarthritis more as a, an injury mechanism. And even an article like this that says low-grade inflammation as a key mediator, when you look at a picture, you know, what do we see? We see cartilage breakdown. We see cartilage breakdown, and uh, so we see this, what looks like tearing of cartilage. You can see this wearing and tearing appearance in the images, and you see mechanical disorders, and this is what, because we can visualize injury. We can visualize trauma and overuse. It's very difficult to visualize these cells talking in the language of chemistry. So papers like this would, be, would do well to completely avoid the discussion of um, mechanical injury joint trauma mechanisms and discuss OA expression in the absence of injury, which is quite easy to do, and I will show you. So if we look further into this and we think, well, if, um, if heart disease, which is essentially you know, vascular disease and organ disease, well, then we should view osteoarthritis in the same fashion. Has this been done? Well, the answer, of course, is yes. Osteoarthritis as a disease of the joint as an organ. So when we look at images in papers like this, what do we see? We never see the word, or we rarely see the word, uh, mechanical injury or trauma. So it requires us to start to get comfortable with biochemistry. That is not really easy to understand without spending a little time. So we can pull back and not get heavy into the complexity of the chemistry and look at it from a much more basic perspective. So if osteoarthritis is heart disease of the joint, we should have some articles that talk about it, and of course we do. This goes back 2005, so it's 2018 right now as I'm creating this video. Is progressive osteoarthritis an atheromaceous vascular disease? And you can see down the bottom right here, vascular disease in subchondral bone this is the bone right below the joint cartilage, may accelerate the OA process. So when we think about heart disease, we think of a low-grade inflammatory state with a buildup of lipid. And if OA is the same as heart disease, we should see similar information. This was the earliest article I was able to find over the years in 1975. In 1975, notice the title, Changes in the Lipids of Human Articular Cartilage as We Age. So arachidonic acid is a pro-inflammatory fatty acid. 
It gives us PGE2, and PGE2 is painful. So all of this occurs slowly over time without any symptoms. So what we are wearing over time, we are wearing on joints that are no longer anti-inflammatory and healing. So the outcome is a wear and lack of repair scenario. Now multiple papers have talked about this lipid deposition, this essentially this heart disease or atherosclerosis of joints for a long time. Here's a more recent paper. Lipid metabolism and osteoarthritis lessons from atherosclerosis. This is a review article published in 2011, so seven years ago. So let me just bold out what I underlined here. Look what we're told. Lipid deposition in the joint is observed at the early stages of osteoarthritis before the occurrence of histological and I added symptomatic changes. So we basically develop the molecular signature, the molecular or the chemistry of OA before we actually get the changes. So when we flame up and incorporate pro-inflammatory fatty acids into joint tissues and then wear on them, we're not going to repair. Over time, this creates the illusion that there was wear and tear. So we'll take a picture of uh, OA chemistry, and here it is. This is published in 05 as well. Now, this image just shows a little bit of the chemistry. There's a whole lot more going on. So look at all this chemistry taking place in osteoarthritis, which also speaks to why just one medication or even two will not get at the pain for lots of people because the chemistry is quite complex. So let's just look at the basics of it. So here we go. Now we're going to compare this chemistry to the chemistry of vascular disease. This is the vascular disease article from 2008 in the American Journal of Pathology. Let's look at the chemistry. This is just a selection. This is just what they showed in this paper. So we're going to compare the chemistry of OA with the chemistry of heart disease, vascular disease, as we see right here. So here we go. We're going to compare them now. So we see prostaglandins, both conditions. We see metalloproteinases in both conditions. Now the metalloproteinases, as you can see, they're released by cartilage cells called chondrocytes, and these MMPs or metalloproteinases, uh, what they do is they digest connective tissue. So you can see a loss of joint cartilage. So here's your joint cartilage, the normal width, and it has been digested down. It does not get worn down. It is digested down. No different than what happens to the vascular wall. We can see a nice intact vascular wall here. This spread you have to have relaxation of the connective tissue. So the metalloproteinases, they digest of the connective tissue. That leads to the ballooning kind of look that we see here in a blood vessel. So the chemistry is, for all practical, practical purposes, identical. From a scientific perspective, there are variations. But on a practical level, it's the same. Here you can see tumor necrosis factors showing up in both conditions. So we know that the chemistry of joint disease is the same as the chemistry of heart disease. Heart disease, and what people are going to say is, well, you know, what if you're fat? Because when you're fat, you're just going to weigh down the joints, and then that will damage the joints. Yeah, but that's not what we understand to be the case. So let's look at what happens when we become obese. On the left side, we see small fat cells and blue anti-inflammatory immune cells dumping anti-inflammatory chemistry. As we become obese... Look what happens to our immune cells. They, the anti-inflammatory immune cells leave and we're left with pro-inflammatory immune cells. And these pro-inflammatory immune cells live in a low-grade state as if there is a low-grade infection or autoimmune disease present. This is just for your T lymphocytes. Same things happened, same thing happens with your macrophages. These are anti-inflammatory macrophages, immune cells, lean fat cells. As we flame up, add on a bunch of sugar and flour and refined oil calories, we become obese. We have a few anti-inflammatory immune cells present still, but we are now overwhelmed with pro-inflammatory macrophages, also immune cells. And this inflammatory chemistry that we see with obesity with our immune cells is no different than the inflammatory chemistry that we see in joints and that we see in blood vessels. So is important to look at these three conditions as essentially 
being identical. They share the exact same inflammatory chemistry. So the question would not be, you know, well, what do you take to fix all this? Well, if you think about it, if if in fact diabetes is the is a precursor for both joint and vascular disease, well, very few people become diabetic unless they get become obese. So when you become obese, you now have this the same inflammatory chemistry being dumped by your fat cells. So you cannot take a drug or a supplement or eat a vegetable, for example, or a fruit and take care of obese chemistry. We've got to lean out the fat cells. And by leaning out the fat cells, simultaneously we deflame the body and we have the best chance to halt or turn around the flame that will be taking place elsewhere. So the big uh, thought on this is to get rid of your sugar and flour calories and replace them with vegetation. So each step to take uh, is found in the Deflame Diet and in many of the other videos that you can listen to uh, at the Deflame Nutrition YouTube channel.